Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thank you for joining me. So now that we know a little bit about foraging, equal, uh, foraging ecology and why deer eat what they eat, let's uh, better understand the nutritional requirements of deer by season and life stage. Notice these, this deer is standing in some upright forbs, having a good time eating these leaves that have cellulose in them because the plants are upright but the deer are going to do the best they can using their microbiotic environment within their rumen, the bacteria and the protozoans. They're gonna use those bacteria and protozoans in their rumen to digest the cellulose in those plants. They're also going to be looking for the more digestible plant parts, the non-cellulose parts of the plant to get a really good diet quality. Nutritional requirements for protein vary by season and life stage. If you look at the fawn in the right, during that fawn, when it's growing its body, it's going to require up to 22% crude protein. When it's growing actively, which is spring, summer, and fall of its first year, and then spring and summer and fall of its second year, it's going to be needing a high diet quality relative to protein. Now, maintenance requirements. Once a, a, a deer, a buck or a doe has fully reached maturity, its maintenance requirements run, ranges from 6 to 10% to just to live. Now, this is not to grow antlers, not to produce a fawn, not to lactate. It just needs to survive six to eight uh, to ten percent. So I, I, I like to throw out the number seven or eight percent is just what uh, protein is what an adult deer needs to live. So all adult deer are not just living. We want them uh, bucks producing antlers. We want does producing fawns. And so typically we say we want the deer on average to eat 16% diet quality in terms of protein. And typically they need more in the spring and summer than they do in the fall and winter. In the fall and winter, they're not necessarily growing anything. They're just uh, existing and maybe in, in the fall, uh, the does are still lactating for quite a while. so. Uh, there's, the does are still needing protein then, uh, but the winter time, the does are, are off of lactating, lactation, they're, they're breeding, and they're starting the early gestation, but the really heaviest protein requirement is during the spring and summer. Let's look at minerals. We like to think about minerals because antlers are made up of minerals. Now, before we talk about minerals, let's talk about the organic material, 50% of the antler is organic material. Basically think protein. The protein consumption of the buck while he's growing his antlers makes up 50% of that antler. Now 23% on average is gonna be calcium. 11% is gonna be phosphorus. And you notice this calcium is 23 to 11. That's about a two to one ratio. And so you want uh, your forages to be have twice as much calcium as they do phosphorus. And if you look at mineral supplements that you might buy, they're going to have a two to one calcium to phosphorus ratio. And looking at some other minerals, uh, we see sodium about 0.9%, magnesium 0.5%, sulfur at 0.3%. Remember earlier we showed that sulfur is High amounts of sulfur are actually avoided by deer in their forage, but they do need some sulfur. So it is an important component of their body. They just don't need too much of it. And too much 
uh, forages that have too, too high a content of sulfur will be avoided by deer. Looking over here for mineral requirements for uh, gestation, late gestation requires 0.6% calcium and about a 0.3% phosphorus. Again, that two to one uh, ratio, calcium and phosphorus. During lactation, they don't need quite as much mineral content, but they need about 0.3% calcium and 0.1% phosphorus. So again, two to one uh, during lactation. We like to make at home mineral recipe. It's you can go to your local co-op and buy dicalcium phosphate and dicalcium, two calciums per molecule of phosphate. So two to one ratio again, dicalcium phosphate, buy a bag of dicalcium phosphate, say a 50 pound bag of dicalcium phosphate, Mix it in with a 50 pound bag of mineralized salt, equal parts, 50 pound bag of mineralized salt. Mix that up thoroughly, pour a portion of it on the ground, and you have created a pretty decent mineral supplement for your deer population. From a year round standpoint, based on what we know about the mineral requirements of the white tailed deer. Use that MSU Deer Lab recipe and, and you'll provide mineral supplements very adequate for your deer population. Now, make note, you cannot put out mineral supplements in most places where chronic wasting disease is present. If you are hunting in a CWD management zone, you cannot put out a mineral lick and you cannot put out supplemental feeding in most cases.